Welcome to the channel. This video is part two of a series of videos that I've put together on how to do well in the project management interview setting. Video number one was all about how to get past the HR phone screen. In this video, we're gonna talk about the very first interaction you're likely to have with the hiring manager. It's a very important interview and we're gonna teach you a lot of things that you're gonna to wanna to know, including the motivations of the hiring manager, what they're looking for. We're gonna teach you about how to prepare for the interview. We're gonna teach you some of the questions that you're likely to get and responses that you should uh, think about giving as a part of the interview cycle. I'm also gonna teach you about questions that you should be asking. And I'm even gonna give you a list of about 15 questions that you may wanna ask as a part of this interview cycle. They're also good for other parts of the interview cycle as well. I'm also gonna talk about all the things that you should not ask in an interview, the things that are gonna make the, man the hiring manager say, nope, this is not the right person. You wanna avoid those questions. I'm gonna talk about all that and more here on the Project Management Nation. Welcome to the Project Management Nation, the place where we talk about all things project management and where I encourage my viewers to think beyond the certification. This video is all about the hiring manager phone screen. This is important because it's the first time you'll be making contact with the hiring manager, so you wanna be sharp. This interview is typically only about 30 minutes. It's typically uh, by telephone, and that's because it's a really nice, easy way for a uh, a hiring manager to make contact with a potential candidate, but without as much commitment of having that person come on site. So this video is gonna talk about what to expect during um, that interview. Couple things to take note of. You are in the middle of a hiring funnel. So let's assume that a hiring organization gets 100 resumes for this job. Of those 100 resumes, 90 people or so are gonna be just screened out based on resume alone. The HR recruiter is gonna to talk to the other 10, maybe 12 people by phone, do that HR phone screen. Of those 10 or 12 people that the HR recruiter has talked to, they're gonna put forward maybe five, six, seven, something like that people to the hiring manager to say, hey, I recommend you do this uh, a phone screen with these people because they're the best of what I've been able to find. So if you've made it to this point, congratulations, you've actually done really well in terms of, of chances um, for getting the role. But there are a lot of things that you need to be paying attention to. Your goal for this interview is to get to the next interview. I've never seen it happen that a person gets a job based on just a phone interview. Maybe it happens, seems to happen in the movies. I've never seen it, don't count on it. So take a little bit of pressure off yourself by reminding yourself that you don't have to get the job with this interview, you just have to get into that next round. So next we're gonna talk about all of the motivations of the hiring manager, what a hiring manager is looking for, and move on from there. So it should come as no surprise that hiring managers are just people and they come in a lot of different varieties. What you're gonna find is that hiring some hiring managers, when you get on that phone with them, they're gonna be really intense. Could be just who they are. Others are gonna be really laid back and they're gonna be anywhere along that whole spectrum. Hiring managers are also gonna be come in and some may be pr very prepared. They will have looked at your resume and have some specific questions they wanna ask you about it. Others, they may not have looked at your resume at all. Some hiring managers are going to be in a good mood. They might have had a good meeting or it's their first meeting of the day, they're fresh. Uh, others are, may have just come out of a meeting where they had a big budget battle that they just lost. You don't quite know what you're gonna get. And you can't prepare for all types of possibilities uh, in the interview for who's gonna be on the other end of the phone. But there are things that you can do to help you along the way. One of the things that I wanted to, to let you know is that I've seen a big difference in the level of experience of the hiring manager and the type of interview that they give. One of the things that I find is that the less experience the uh, hiring manager is, uh, sometimes the more difficult the questions are or the more hard the interview is. 
They're not as experienced at doing interviews, so they're going to be a little bit keyed up. They're going to be a little bit more intense. They're going to be focused on a list of questions, and it could be a harder experience for you if the person doesn't have a lot of experience because those that do have a lot of experience have learned to rely a little bit more on their instincts, on their gut, on the things that um, people are saying, uh, and they tend to be just a little bit more relaxed. Not in all cases, but that's just a sign to look out for if you have a really difficult interview, may not be uh, one of the more experienced hiring managers out there. Some things that are likely to be common across hiring managers is that they may ask uh, questions over that the uh, HR recruiter did. Uh, it's not uncommon to hear questions again about oh, salary expectation, about hiring dates, about things that you've already explained to the HR recruiter. Don't be alarmed by that. It just could be that the hiring manager doesn't remember or uh, the HR recruiter didn't send that information on. But be prepared to answer those questions a second time. Another common thing is that hiring managers need just enough information to move you on to the next round of the interview. What that means is you're not gonna get the job right away. Nobody gets the job uh, uh, just based on a phone screen, never heard of it. They, what they're looking for is just enough information to know if you're a little bit better, a little bit worse than their next best candidate. Uh, and that's what's gonna help them decide to bring you into the on-site interview, which is the goal of this interview. In this interview, the hiring manager is going to focus on your project management skills much more so than the HR phone screener did. That's because this is the sweet spot of what the hiring manager does. These are the skills that they need to know that you have before they ever consider bringing you on for um, the job or even the next round of interviews. So you're going to get hit with some, some pretty good um, project management related questions in this interview. And then finally, all hiring managers are going to want to hire people that they like. Uh, this is, whether they under, know it consciously or not, people want to be around people that they like. So one of your goals for this interview is going to be to try to find a way to make a connection with that hiring manager. Now it's hard because you're on the phone, you're not going to have nonverbal clues, you're, it's all going to be based on the voice on the other end. But uh, make sure that you bring your energy, bring your enthusiasm. If you're a person who is typically shy, you're going to want to try to find a way to get out of your shell so that the real you can be seen in hopes that that uh, can allow for a connection uh, by the hiring manager. So make sure that you bring your best self to this interview. Preparation for this interview is similar to the preparation you did for the HR phone screen. There are certain things that you should do prior to the interview to make sure that you are ready for it. The first is make sure that you prepare consistent answers to some of the key questions you're likely to be asked. For example, if the recruiter asked you why you want to leave your current role and you told them it's because you want more professional opportunity, Make sure that is the answer that you give to the hiring manager. Now you can add more uh, information, more stories, more reasons that support that premise, but don't introduce an all new idea there. If you tell the hiring manager that you don't like your current manager very much at all, that's going to be a possible alarm bell as the HR recruiter and the hiring manager compare notes. Which one of the answers is really right? You look inconsistent and perhaps even deceptive. You want to avoid that. Number two, you want to make sure that you prepare uh, a few key talking points that you can pepper into your responses to the hiring manager. What are those key things that you want the hiring manager to know about you and why you are the right candidate? And make sure you are able to work those into any answers that he provides. It's almost like what politicians do when they get asked questions. But you don't want to do any avoidance here. You want to make sure you're answering questions honestly and, and forthrightly. But make sure that you work in the things that you want to have the hiring manager hear. You also want to use this interview as a way to find out if you want to work for the company and if you want this role and you want to work for this hiring manager. To do that, you should prepare a list of questions ahead of time that you can ask during the interview or at the end. Most hiring managers will leave time at the end for you to ask questions. You want to look at the types of questions you're going to ask. In fact, I often come into an interview with 20 or more questions prepared and I will categorize those questions. I'll prepare questions about the role itself. I will 
prepare questions about the company. I will pre prepare questions about the hiring manager, their styles, the things that they're looking for. And I can work those um, questions in when I'm given that opportunity. That will make you look like you are genuinely interested in the role and help you to find out if you actually want that role uh, for yourself as a part of your next career step. So what questions should you be prepared for? You should be prepared for all of the same questions that you got in the HR phone screen. It's likely that you will get some of them again with the hiring manager phone screen, but hopefully not all of them. Personally, I like to open all of my interviews by inviting the candidate to give me a 60 to 90 second elevator pitch of who they are and why they would be right for this job. I give the person a prime opportunity to give me their best sales pitch up front. Sounds great, sounds easy, right? Folks, I've just laid a trap for you. Here's what I'm really looking for when I, ans when I ask that question of you. One, I wanna listen for the actual content of your response. That's, that's important, the things that you say. But I, to me, even more than that, it's how you manage your time. If you come in telling me that you're a project manager and I'm supposed to trust your scheduling ability and I'm supposed to trust your ability to manage a meeting and get all the content in in a limited amount of time and you can't manage yourself to, get, to take 90 seconds and give me a pitch about who you are, that doesn't sit very well. So you wanna be prepared for that. I'm looking for time management skills when I ask this question. I am also looking for your persuasiveness. How good were the arguments that you made? Did you just ramble on completely unprepared or did you hit me with some really good arguments as to why I should be hiring you? How you respond to this question tells me a lot about how you think. If you just give me a list of all of the places you've worked before, I know that you're methodical, going one by one by one on things. I also know that you're not very creative. If you come in and give me really strong persuasive arguments, I know that you're gonna be great in front of stakeholders and that's pretty important. I also know that if you're not able to control your time, we're gonna have some problems. I kid you not, about six years ago, I had a phone screen that I did for a role and I asked this question. This person did not stop talking. I had 30 minutes set aside for the interview. At the end of the 30 minutes, I had to stop the person. I said, thank you, our time is up. You'll be hearing from the recruiter. The person sounded flabbergasted on the other end that I didn't ask any additional questions. But that's not my job to manage your time. I told you what my expectations were. That person totally blew it. Now, why did I sit there and listen to that person for 30 minutes ramble on? Because I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That person had no sense of timing, no sense of the ability to uh, control themselves and what they said. As a hiring manager, I'm probably going to ask you why you're leaving your current job even though the HR recruiter probably asked you that question as well. I wanna hear from you your reasons and the kind of the passion and your voice about why it is that you wanna leave a, a job. If you don't have a job to leave and uh, you're not working right now, that's totally fine too. Um, no harm, no foul there. I'm gonna ask you why you want to come and work for me, my role, the company that I work for. This question is actually really meaningful to me. You can learn a lot about a person by the way that they respond to this question. When I'm listening to candidate responses, I'm listening for uh, signs that this person really actually wants this role, not just any role, and that they understand the opportunity for joining this company, not just any company. Something else that I listen for is clues around, oh, I've heard it pays well, or, oh, I've seen that the company is listed as a great place to work on some list out there somewhere. So that's great. That is all about what you get from the relationship. I wanna hear about what I'm going to get. So make sure that you keep the focus in the right place. You should be able to show interest in what the company does, what its values are, any recent news, any big personnel changes that were announced. You should show that you've done at least some homework on what the company is, where it's heading, and how you're going to contribute to that. I asked what the characteristics of a good project manager are because I wanna hear what they think a good project manager um, does and how they act and what the innate skill sets are. And there are certain things that I'm gonna be looking for in their response, but I also take their, whatever their response is and I turn it back around on them 
And I say to them, so if those are the most important things that a project manager brings, how is it that you are especially suited to bring those to this role of mine? And let them try to answer that question. That can sometimes surprise them. If the person is early in their career, I'm going to ask them about the biggest project that they've worked on. And that could be in terms of the number of people involved, the size of the budget involved, the duration of the project. Uh, I'll probe uh, potentially any of those areas if, I, if I'm looking for something specific um, for the role. I may ask what project you've worked on that you liked the most. I ask this question because I want to find out where the person's passion is. I want to know if they really enjoy co uh, complex projects where they have to do a lot of problem solving, or if they like projects that are high profile, if they like projects that are easy. Uh, that question can give me a lot of information about who that person is. I'll ask questions around domain experience. And what I mean by domain experience is if I'm hiring for a uh, project manager in uh, to do a, a specific project, they need to be able to have some experience around that technical area or around that professional area. So if it's a marketing project and it's all about funnel work, they need to understand what a marketing funnel is. If it's in a technical organization and it's around Salesforce, they need to have and understand the basics of Salesforce. So while I may not be doing a technical interview, I may ask some very specific questions to see if they really actually know about the domain area that I'm hiring for. I'll ask questions around Agile versus Waterfall and where they fall on that spectrum. I wanna know if they're most comfortable in an Agile environment environment or most comfortable in a waterfall environment. And it's okay to be in one or the other. What I get a lot though is, oh, I'm, I'm great with both. So that may or may not be true. I personally believe that people have an affinity for one for the other. So I appreciate the honesty when someone actually takes a stand and says, oh, I'm a little bit better with this, but I'm very familiar with the other also. I may ask questions around projects that have turned yellow or red. And I ask them about why the project turned red, what the project's about, and then what they personally and did in specifics to help get that project back on track. What I'm looking for there is how that person reacts to a stressful situation, a situation where they have to really work to bring a project back on track. And I'm listening, uh, I'm listening for certain key phrases and words and things that help me know that this person really has that experience to bring a project back into green. I may ask a question around how you build trust with people, how you build trust with stakeholders and with team members. It's so critical that a new project manager that's been hired can build relationships quickly with people and establish that trust. And I wanna know how you've done it in other places. I may ask questions around how you managed a difficult relationship. Not all relationships that we build are gonna be easy. So how do you work with people who are difficult to work with? And I'm going to look for concrete examples of where you've had that in your past. Make sure with all of these questions that you provide real world examples whenever you have real world examples to share. If you start talking about theory or refer to anything around uh, what PMI says, what Agile says, I, I'm not interested in how much you know about the theories. I'm interested in how you made it work in your previous job experience. And then I may ask questions about where you want to see your career in the future. Uh, in other words, what you want to be when you grow up. Everyone has career aspirations. I want to know what yours are. Do you want to take on bigger and bigger projects? Great. I want to know that. Do you want to take over my job? I'm not threatened by that. I want to know that you want to move into people management. Do you want to move into some other aspect of the company? That's okay to say, be a little careful with that one because I don't want it to feel like you're using my job as an opportunity to hop into another part of the company. But it is good to know where your ultimate uh, happiness in career satisfaction is so that I can help you to get there. And if I don't have a way to do that, this may not be the right job for you. So now that we've reviewed the questions that you're likely to get asked, I want to go over a list of questions that I feel like most people should ask as a part of the job interview cycle. As I said at the beginning of this video, I like to prepare 20 or more questions for any job interview. That may sound excessive, but what I find is that with those 20 questions, 
By the end of the interview, most of them have already been answered just as a part of the dialogue that I've had with the hiring manager. So I'm not going to sit and ask 20 questions, nor would I recommend that you sit and ask a, a hiring manager 20 questions at the end of the interview. But of those 20, there maybe there's five or six that are left, and this is a great way to demonstrate that you have prepared for the interview and that you have thoughtful questions to ask the uh, manager about the role. So I like to break up my questions into three broad categories. First category is about the role. Develop a list of questions about the role. The next category is about the company. Have a set of questions ready to go about the company. The next grouping of questions is about the manager. What kind of questions do you need to know about the manager to know if you want to work for that person? So let's go through what some of those questions should be. Let's talk about role-related questions first. A good question to start with is, what does success look like for this role? This allows you to hear from the, the mouth of the hiring manager what uh, they're really expecting from the person in this role. Another good question similar to that one to ask is, what are the biggest challenges you see the person who gets the role having as they onboard and take over the project? Find out the, the difficult areas so that you can be uh, more prepared if you're offered the job to know if it's gonna be a good fit. It could be that this particular project that they're thinking about has very difficult stakeholders. Do you have a good skill set for managing those stakeholders? That's an important thing to know. You may want to ask who in the organization you get to work with. If you get to work with a broad set of stakeholders and across all aspects of the company, that's a really intriguing role. That gives you uh, a great background, a great experience to grow with that company. And that's something that's important to know. It's also good to know if it's going to be a very narrowly focused role. Depending on who you are as a person, one of those might be better for you than the other. You may want to ask what projects you're going to get to work on if the hiring manager hasn't talked about those. It could be that they're hiring for a very specific project for this person to take on. It could be that they're just hiring generally and there's a, a potential list of projects that, that this person could work on. You're going to want to know the types of projects and what they are. I've had experiences where people have asked me that. I've explained the list of projects that I'm looking for and found that there was a huge mismatch in expectation. That's such a good thing to get out of the way, especially early on in the interview process. Finally, related to the role, you may want to ask what the career path is for people who are in similar roles at your company. It's good to know what the possible futures are that you would have if you took that role. Now let's look at five good questions to ask about the organization. First good question would be to ask the hiring manager, how long have you been with the company and what do you like most about working for the company? That's a good, easy question for a hiring manager to answer, and it opens up uh, a lot of, of window into what it's really like to work there. Alternatively, you could ask, and what's something that you wish was different about working at the company? That will give you a, a slightly different perspective as well. Another good question about working for the company is, what is the typical work-life balance? A question you don't want to ask is, how many hours do you expect me to work in a week? That makes it sound like you're trying to do as, as little as possible. But asking about work-life balance is a gentler way of asking something very similar. Are people dedicated and working until 10 o'clock at night for the company? That might come out as a part of the interview. And if you're not a person who wants to sign up for that, that's a good thing to know. So ask the manager about work-life balance if they haven't already talked about it. Ask the hiring manager about challenges that the organization may be facing and what the company is doing to respond to those challenges. It's good to know a little bit about the stability of the company that you're going to work for. The, uh, maybe it's about the industry, maybe it's about the company itself, but having an understanding of what those challenges are will help you make a decision if you are offered the role in the future. I believe that every person who interviews for a job should be asking the hiring manager what the company culture is. And what I mean by company culture is what are the values that the company espouses? You may be able to find them on the internet, so you don't want to ask something that's basic like that, but you want to find out what it's really like to work there. 
and ask the manager for an experience that exemplifies that company culture? Is there anything that they've seen in the past that uh, really is typical for how the company operates? That'll help you know what it would be really like to be on the inside of the company. Finally, I recommend doing a little bit of research about the company, looking at recent news articles, recent events that have been published about the company, um, any kind of press releases that have gone out, and asking an interesting question based on something that you learned that's very recent, that's out in the news. That'll show that you've actually done some research on the company. So let's talk about five basic questions that you can ask about the hiring manager. First question, and I think it's a fair one, is what's your management style like? And what you're going to be looking for here are uh, answers around giving people uh, enough autonomy to run their projects without a lot of interference. If you don't hear things like that, you may have somebody who's a little bit of a micromanager or where there's really, really heavy process. You're going to want to find out what that environment is like and what that hiring manager specifically expects from uh, his or her people. Another question you can ask is, how does the hiring manager like to get their status reports? Now, it could be that there is a full system in place for how a project manager does status reports, and the hiring manager might talk about that. But what I'm actually trying to get to is, how does this person like to learn information from other people? How do they like to get their news from other people? And some people like email. Some people will like um, instant messaging like Slack. Some people want to have some kind of a formal um, in-person meeting. That tells you a lot about what that hiring manager is like. Another good question would be to ask, if my project has a problem, how would you like to be informed about that problem? Some managers want to learn uh, about problems right away, meaning they want you to walk over to the desk or to use Slack to let you know about it or send an uh, email immediately. Others might expect you to try to solve the problem yourself first before you ever come to them. Find out what that hiring manager's tolerances are for um, being notified about problems. Another interesting question that I like to ask, depending on the situation, is this. How would I know if you're having a bad day? This should tell you a lot about the hiring manager's personality if that hiring manager be, is being upfront about who they are and the things that make them upset. I want to know if somebody's a yeller. I want to know if somebody um, takes things deeply personally or, or gets really moody. Um, they may not answer the question that bluntly, but you may be able to discern from the way they do ask the question what that person is really like. And then the final question that uh, I recommend asking is, did you get from the interview everything you need to make a decision about my qualifications? And that's not specific about the project or about the hiring manager, but it's a really great final question to ask. And I know that when people have asked that question of me, it does make me stop and think, okay, do I really feel like I know enough to be able to say yes or no to move them on to the next round? I had something like that come up in actually the last few months as I was interviewing someone. This person was having trouble keeping their answers to a nice contained set of, of time. And the person was a bit of a rambler. And we've talked about that previously. I don't, I don't care for that. But at the end of the interview, we'd only gotten to maybe four or five questions and they were surprised and they said, oh, well, but did you get enough to know? And I could not honestly answer the question, yes, I know enough, because there were a lot of questions that went unanswered. So I actually gave that person about 20 more minutes more additional time in the future. Turns out I didn't end up hiring that person anyway, but it did open more opportunity for that person. So that's a good question to ask at the end. So now some questions that you should never, under any circumstance, ask the hiring manager. Number one, don't ask about how many hours you're expected to work in a week. This is a question that's going to signal to the hiring manager that you don't want to work hard or that you're afraid of hard work. The way to ask that question was already covered. Ask about the work-life balance of the company or of the role. That should give you a general expectation about how hard you're going to be expected to work. Also, never ask for the contact information of the hiring manager. You may be asking for a very innocent and possibly good reason, such as wanting to send a thank you note at the end of the interview. Resurse, resist that urge though. Do not ask for the contact information. You will already have the contact information of the HR recruiter. If you want to send a thank you note, type it up, send it to the recruiter, ask them to send it on to the hiring manager. That's great. 
But as soon as you ask me for my contact information, my, my uh, alarm bells start to go off. I also have strong opinions about whether or not uh, LinkedIn invitations are appropriate as part of the interview process. It is fair game for you to go out and to check out my LinkedIn profile. In fact, it's probably pretty smart. But if you send me a, an invite to connect on LinkedIn and we're early stages of the interview, not great. I feel like that's a little bit of an invasion. I only like to, to actually link with people who I know their skill sets and trust and could potentially um, advocate for um, if, the, if the need came up. And we don't have that kind of relationship yet, so please don't ask. If you're in the final rounds or you've just been hired, absolutely send me a LinkedIn response. Finally, the killer question that you should never under any circumstance ask, at least to me, and I don't think for any other hiring manager either, is how did I do in the interview? Or am I gonna be put through to the next round? Either of those questions to me signal A, insecurity about how things went, immaturity about where you are as a professional, and they're just completely inappropriate. I have dismissed people right on the spot from further consideration when that question has come up. Resist the urge. We all want to know how well we did. Allow the process to play out. That's your only safe bet there. Don't ask that question. So let's bring it all together now with some tips about how to uh, prepare for and uh, do well in your interview. First, make sure you focus on time management. You are given just 30 minutes for this interview in a typical first screen with the hiring manager. Make sure that you keep your questions to a nice, tight, focused um, package so that there's plenty of time for the hiring manager to get out all of their questions. Some hiring managers are going to uh, move you along and say, oh, we, we need to keep moving, I've got more questions. I don't do that because I don't feel like that's my job. You're a project manager, you run meetings, you manage the time, and if I run out of time before I've gotten all my questions out, game's over, I don't know enough about you. Next tip is to give real world examples whenever you're trying to answer a hiring manager's question. If you start going into theory or, oh, if that circumstance came up, this is what I would do, it's not nearly as strong as saying, this circumstance happened to me, this is what I did. Tying your answers to real life experience, always the best way to go. Next tip, make sure you're interviewing back. I've hit that a couple of times, but to me as a hiring manager, it is important to get the right hire you as the hiree, it's important to make sure you're getting the right job. There should be a mutual understanding about that and I believe that you have every right to ask questions that are gonna help make you comfortable that this is the right role for you. And in fact, I think that that's a real sign of professional maturity when you do that and that's a plus. Another tip, it's important to come into an interview with confidence, be, be confident and comfortable in the things that you say but make sure that it doesn't go to the point of hubris. What I mean by that is make sure that you're able to answer questions about things that have happened negatively to you in your career, such as projects going off track uh, in an in a honest and true and real way. I, honest to goodness, people, this happened to me. In a, uh, it was an interview at a company that was really well renowned. I was hiring for a very senior project management role. It was a person who had great credentials. They were with good companies. And when I asked them to tell me an experience of when a project went off track and what they did to bring it on track, this person told me without any irony that they've never had a project go off track. And this person had 10 to 15 years of experience. I know that that's not true. When I pushed further on other questions of that type, they refused to even acknowledge that anything had ever gone wrong in their career. I actually stopped the interview, pointed out that I didn't believe it, uh, what they were saying and that the way they were acting came across as, as them having hubris and they rejected that as well. And so at that point, there was no way to salvage that interview. Um, it was one of the most surreal interviews I've had. Don't let your interview get to that point. You need to be real about the good and the bad. Finally, be likable. 
Hiring managers like to hire people that they, um, that they like. It's just kind of a human nature thing. In fact, you know, it could be that you're going to be spending a lot of time with this person. And so you want to make sure that it's somebody that you're going to uh, be able to work with. Doesn't mean that they have to be exactly like you. In fact, variety is great. I look for people um, who are different than myself because that actually helps with the dynamic. But they have to be likable. Somebody that you're going to want to be able to spend that much time with. So bring your real self to the interview. Figure out a way to, to work in your... your um, characteristics, your kind of personality traits, that can go a long way to help building that connection. Okay, just some final thoughts before we close up here. First, if you got to this stage where you're interviewing with the hiring manager, take heart because that's a good sign. You've already gone through several screens and you've made it. So congratulations on that. Number two, Take some of the pressure off of yourself by realizing that your goal is not to get the job, it's to get to the next interview. Number three, make sure that you prepare for the interview and prepare to manage your time. On the next video, we're going to talk about on-site interviews and how to prepare for and plan for doing well in an on-site interview. Those are a lot of fun because you're going to have a lot of different people potentially that you're going to have to talk with in a day, all with different agendas, all with different angles. And it can make for um, a stressful time, but can also, it can also be a really great time. If there's anything that you found valuable about this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. It really helps me out. Thank you, and thank you for being part of the Project Management Nation.